Hello, welcome to this lesson in Calculus 1 Limits. In this section, we're going to talk about something called, called the squeezing theorem. It's a weird sounding name. Basically, it's a theorem that allows you to find the limit of certain functions uh, that you may not be able to find uh, with traditional means, basically. And it involves squeezing that function between two other functions. If you know the behavior of a function that's on top of the function of interest that you have, and if you know the behavior of a function that comes up from underneath, then you're kind of squeezing together and kind of intersecting the function that you actually care about. You actually can calculate the limit of what you want just by knowing uh, what the other bounding functions are doing. That's a lot of talking, but really it's very simple to understand with a, with a single picture here. So here's a graph. Here would be x and f of x. And basically the function that I want to find the limit of might look something like this. So the function might go like that. And we'll call that function g, g of x, right? Now ultimately, what I'm really trying to do is find the limit of this function as x approaches a. So basically here is some point A, and you know from doing this enough, if you approach, then basically the limit is going to be here. All right? But as you know, the limits of some functions are a little bit harder to find than limits of other functions, right? Um, and so this is a nice smooth function, so it might be pretty easy, but just depending on what you have, it might be a little difficult to find that particular limit. The squeezing theorem basically says that if you have a function that you care about finding the limit of, and if it's difficult to find that limit, if you f can find a function on the top and the bottom that behave in a certain way, you can actually find the limit you care about. For instance, here's a, a limit, a function on the top. It might be coming in like this, and then it might just barely touch that point and then go off like that. So you see how the function comes down and touches barely at the point of interest that I care about. I'm going to call this function h. Okay, And then we're going to have another function that we're going to come in from the bottom. And so this guy might have some hills and valleys and barely touch before going on its merry way. So you see, the one we actually care about, the one we want to find the limit of, is actually this one right here. And what we've basically had to, 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 to draw on the board here is that if we find a function above, where the entire function is above the function of interest, called h, then if we can also find a function that exists entirely below the function, and I forgot to put this, we'll call this function f. So if this function always exists above g, and if this function always exists below g, and if they basically all have to touch at this common point that I actually care about, and I'm a little sloppy in the way I drew it, the point I care about is this one right here. They barely touch right there. Then, um, basically, you have squeezed it in, in place. So if you know what the limit of the top function is at this point, and you know what the limit of the bottom function is at this point, which is L, then you've basically proven that the limit of the function you care about is also L. So it's kind of called the squeezing theorem because it, they kind of intersected that one little point uh, there. So if you wanted to write it in words, you would call this the squeezing, or the squeeze theorem. And a picture makes it very simple to understand, but in words it would say, assume that f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x. Now before I go any further, what this means is that the function g is greater than f of x, and the function g is less than h of x, which is the way I've drawn it. The function g is less than h and greater than f. Uh, less than h, greater than f, exactly as I've drawn it, uh, for all x. So in order for this theorem to work, you have to have, be able to find a function 